Well, let's talk about this minimum passing score. I'm sure by now everyone has had a chance to see their results and uh, hear that uh, the passing rate was 25%. And by the way, that is the lowest passing rate in CFA, uh, CFAI history for level one, for all three levels, actually, I shouldn't just say level one. That is the lowest passing rate that has ever happened. If you look in the description box below, there is a link uh, to a document uh, that has all of the passing rates for all of the years all the way back to 1963 so you can have a look at the uh, uh, at the passing rates by the way while I'm doing this video if you hear banging in the background I have construction going on uh, in uh, part of the house I've been waiting to do the video all day there's been noise all day and I thought well I'll just do the video and I'll just say listen if you hear that noise back there just ignore it for now if it gets too loud I'll I'll hit pause and, and restart at a, another point. So if you see edits along the way, it's just because the construction got too loud. All right, this pass rate, what can we say about that? Listen, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, uncharted territory here. Um, I can't defend it. Uh, I really don't know. Let's have a look uh, at what the CFAI said on Reddit because they did post uh, on Reddit and they were challenged about how they set the minimum passing score and they did respond to it. So let's see what their response was here. Um, some level one candidates had been deferred twice prior to the May administration uh, due to restrictions caused by the global pandemic. We believe the stop start nature of the deferred candidate studies may be reflected in the overall passing rate. Uh, not getting a lot of love on that one. Uh, not one, not one upvote, all down votes on that one. No one, I don't think anybody's buying it. You know, we take them at their word and say, okay, well, um, you say that. I'm going to need more words to explain what do you mean the stop-start nature is reflected in the pass rates. Since they had more time to prepare, I would naturally assume that they did better. Uh, not only that, it does look like the minimum passing score is 73, 74%, eyeballing it, which means it is an elevated MPS from previous years. So you have a slightly elevated MPS and a lower passing score, so it, it doesn't fit well with me. I'll give you an idea that I have, and listen, it's just an idea. What do we have right now? We got one data point. Uh, at 25%. So almost any, <laughs> almost any theory is going to fit one data point. We're going to need to see uh, a couple more data points. Uh, July, level one uh, wrote, those results won't be out till, I believe, September sometime. And then August uh, results will be out sometime in October. We'll start to get better ideas of, of uh, you know, if we revert back to the 45% pass rate or if this is something that uh, that's going to stay a while. And if it is something that's going to stay a while, at least we have some idea of what we can read into that. Um, so here's my thought. And, uh, you know, again, it's just a thought. You know, there are, um, if you look at level one, level two, and level three, there's 45%, uh, uh, let's say, that pass level one. Uh, and go on to level two, but then only 45% past level two. Well, if you're getting past level one, what's going on at level two? Uh, and it could be that, well, you know what, if you just pass level one, you're more likely to not pass level two, but if you really do well at level one, you're far more likely to pass level two. So this may be a way of saying, listen, why why let people fail at uh, you know level two after passing level one? Why not just make level one a little bit more rigorous, a little harder, so that the candidate who passes level one is far better set up to pass level two. So if we think about uh, the minimum passing score being here, and that these candidates then go on to level two, and I'll just draw level two here and say the minimum passing score is here, that means that this group over here fail, whereas this group over here pass. So why not just raise the minimum passing score? Uh, to a level that increases the probability that those who pass level one are better set up to pass level two. But at level two, uh, if this many people pass, uh, that many people pass level three, are we going to see this at level two? Are we going to see a lower pass rate at level two saying, okay, well, those who uh, barely pass level two don't set up well for level three, so let's do the same there? I don't know. 
again one data point it's just a theory I have that says listen instead of having all of these you know 43 percent pass at level one 45 percent pass at level two 55 percent pass at level three why not concentrate all of the do not passes down in level one and you know the top 25 percent there you go they're the ones that are more likely to pass level two and level three so if we're going to have failure rates uh, and low pass rates let's focus it all on level one and those who do get out are better set up for level two and three and if uh, people get discouraged at least they get discouraged at level one and they don't get to level two and level three and continually try and try uh, that you know maybe it's just a way to discourage the ones who aren't willing to put in the time uh, to discourage them at level one just a theory just a theory trying to fit it to one single data point and again when you have one data point you can almost any theory will fit that well we'll see what uh what happens next tuesday with level two that's going to be interesting uh is this going to be reflected at level two now if it's not then maybe there was an anomaly at level one and if we don't see it again in september maybe it was just an anomaly but if we do see a lower pass uh, a lower pass rate at level two with a higher mps it starts to fit the theory a little bit better and as you get more data you ask yourself does it continually fit that particular theory just my wildest guess as to what's going on i don't buy the oh it's all about money uh thing uh there are no shareholders in cfai there is no share capital uh there are no dividends there's no share-based compensation so i don't really buy that their balance sheet is is a public record uh, they have half a billion dollars of cash last time I saw it I don't know if the pandemic made a dent in that or not but half a billion dollars of of cash uh, I don't think they're doing this for the money uh, I, I think that uh, uh, you know uh, there are some some decisions being made that maybe they're not as transparent as they can be or that they want to be or you know maybe that they should be uh, but if uh, you were going to raise the value of the charter, um, you know, you would raise the minimum passing score and thus lower the pass rate. And I think focusing it or concentrating at level one makes a lot of sense. Listen, universities do this all the time. There are not enough spaces in year two and year three and year four at a university for everyone in year one. So I'm sure you heard the term weeder courses before where they weed uh, candidates out but there's usually at least one course uh, and one required course in first year that is unnecessarily difficult uh, and it is meant to to limit the number of people moving on to second year so that only the top move on to second year and of course there are some weeder courses at level two to uh, uh, you know winnow out the class even more at level three uh, sorry level three uh, uh, year three well maybe maybe that's what's going on uh here so you know i don't buy the money grab argument i don't buy the argument that it uh waters down the value of the charter or makes it uh you know uh, not worth getting or cheaper if anything if this is if my theory is right you know i don't know if it is but if it is it kind of makes it a little bit more elite uh in that sense without more data i, I would just be uh, uh you know guessing uh, so you have my theory i don't know we'll see as as time goes on strategy now what do we do uh for those who uh did pass uh you have november uh for level two and you have 2022 uh for level two i think november's tight to be honest with you and if it is the case where they are raising the minimum passing score november's tight you know all the more reason to give yourself more time all the more reason to start early uh, because you got to be in that top 25 percent if you plan to be in the top 25 percent uh, and you study to be in the top 25 percent that's probably the best strategy to follow as opposed to studying to be in the top 45 or top 50 percent um, you know you're in competition with everyone around you uh, so i think that if everyone showed up and everyone did 80 percent i think the minimum passing score would rise such that the pass rate is still within historical norms so I'd be looking at 2022 uh, if I passed level one, unless you've already been preparing for level two. If you've been following a tapering, uh, 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 a tapering strategy, uh, maybe some of you were delayed for a while. If you've been following a tapering strategy, sure, you know you can make a run for uh, 
November. But if you know, if 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 you're making a decision about where to go, I'd be looking at uh, at at least February, not November. Maybe even August, if you if you feel that you know what, I just want a break. And listen, I don't blame you. I'm not going to to say, listen, you know, you should take this or this. You want a break, take a break. Especially if you've been deferred once, once or twice, take a break. Um, you know, maybe think about August of 2022. For those who didn't make it, eh, it's a bit of a tougher decision. If you uh, take it in November, it's the same content. If you take it in February and give yourself more time, there have been significant changes at level one. Uh, I changed uh, quite a few readings uh, and uh, had a chance to see uh, some of the changes. Some readings were minor, some sections were complete rewrites. Uh, and there were uh, new readings added. I think two or three new readings uh, were added uh, throughout level one for 2022. So you risk shouldering that burden where you, you go to a section, you say, well, this is all new again. Now I have to go through this again. Uh, and there's a lot uh, that changed in corporate finance, a lot that changed in quant, uh, quite a bit uh, changed sporadically throughout fixed income, uh, alternative investments, all new, uh, uh, a different uh, a different focus, a different approach there. You know, you got to take that on, right? So uh, if you didn't make it, uh, it's not as if you got to start from zero. I strongly recommend November. I would make a serious push for November. Get yourself a plan. Make a push for November. But you're going to need some things here. Discipline. Uh, because, uh, you know, aiming uh, to get 65 or 70% is not going to do it. you got to start aiming for 75, 80% now. Right? Uh, focus. You're going to need discipline and focus. And I've been saying this for, for quite a long time that, you know, your, your job at level one is not to pass level one. Your job at all times is to prepare for level three. And the deeper the foundation you build at level one, uh, the better the success you're going to have at level two and level three. You set yourself up for success. You don't want to just barely get out of level one because level two will have something to say about that. And that goes back to my theory that, well, maybe CFAI is thinking the same things. It's like, why barely let you out of level one when we know, probabilistically speaking, you're not going to get past level two. And then it's going to be harder at level two because you, you, you haven't built that foundation at level one. Let's keep you at level one till you have that solid foundation and move on. And I'm telling you, there are callbacks at level two to level one, and there are callbacks at level three all the way back to level one. But there, especially in fixed income at level three, if you don't quite understand duration and convexity, key rate duration, spot rates, forward rates, uh, par rates, level three fixed income is going to be a nightmare for you to get through. So uh, good opportunity to build that foundation. I'm gonna hit pause now because they're about to uh, make a lot of noise. Uh, and we'll just pick it up uh, in a little bit. Okay, I think I've got a few more minutes here uh, of silence before they, they start again. I asked them for a bit of a break here. Um, a few uh, 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 points to uh, tie up on. Uh, for any of our subscribers uh, that had a 2021 subscription, uh, you do know, of course, you have a one fee to pass. That means you paid for level one once. You don't pay for it again. So if you didn't make it, simply uh, reach out to us on the uh, on the site. Use the contact us option uh, from the website and uh, somebody will send you instructions on how, how you uh, can uh, set up uh, your next exam date, how you can extend your package to the next exam date. We've automated as much as we possibly can. So you have that. Um, if you didn't make it and you know you're going to rewrite, and again, I strongly suggest November so that you don't have to relearn some new stuff. You know, you, you, you didn't make it. You, you're not starting from zero. You're almost there. Uh, so if you are extending to November, there's no point in waiting a month before you do it. You may as well get set up now. You may as well get it set up now. And listen, I've said this in previous videos as well. Focus on the quality of your learning, the process that you go through, not on the speed of your learning and on the quantity of your learning. You don't need 5,000 questions. You don't need 15 mock exams. Slow down. Uh, we do have uh, some people on our site that speed through all of the content. 
Uh, and when they get to the end of chapter question videos, what's this? What's that? Why are you doing this? How come it's not A? How come it's not B? Hey, whoa, you should be telling me, right? When you uh, do the end of chapter questions as well, once you're done a reading, you do the end of chapter questions, well, it's all recent in your mind. Uh, you're going to do okay. You get 72%. You think, okay, I got 72 No, look at it the other way. You missed 28% and probably more because you might have got lucky on the 72 and got the right answer for the wrong reason. Slow down. Uh, you don't need quantity. The questions at the end of the chapter are good enough. The, the questions within the reading are good enough. The questions on the CFAA site and the mock exams they give you, these are all good enough. There's plenty there already. Slow down. Do each question and, and truly know why the answer is the answer. Don't just say, A, A, I got it right and move on. You might have got it right for the wrong reasons, okay? Um, oh, they want to make noise. Hang on. All right. Um, thought I had something more to say, but I don't. But uh, I thought I'd come back on and say, okay, well, that's it. It would be odd if I just left it the way it was. And, hey, how come you didn't come back and finish? Uh, well, that's it. Uh, any any uh, point I didn't touch upon, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment section. If I can uh, you know, address it, I will. Um, beyond that, uh, that's it.